stuttering John. John yeah, Melendez baby. is in studio. <laughs> John's uh, got a podcast, the Stuttering John podcast, yeah. and that premieres on Wednesdays. Well, or it premiered last Wednesday, yeah. but it'll it, it will be up every every Wednesday. Yeah. Every Wednesday, yeah. I did it with Howie Mandel this time, which was hysterical because he, he's really funny. Yeah, he's great and also incredibly OCD. Do you know that he's bald because? He shaved his head because he was so afraid of the germs in his hair. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't know that, and I thought I knew everything about the man. And I and I also always thought it was weird because most guys, you'll see it thinning for a couple of years, and then you'll go, okay, now I get it. But he... Yeah, he did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like when you see the corset on the on the porn star. Oh yeah, it's like oh she had a kid. She's yeah. getting all up there in right. years. You'll see the guys. Uh, you'll see like the athletes will be balding for a while, and then they just go they go for it. But yeah. I never saw that with Howard. Yeah. I saw this huge Jufro, <laughs> and now uh, Mr. Kleenberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's well. He's I got OCD as well. So we always used to exchange those stories when he was on the Tonight Show. What, and <laughs> how did what it all right your journey with 15 <laughs> years of stern how did that begin oh i uh i was at nyu and i was majoring in film and and my friend you know mitch fatale you know him he's a he's a comic probably and uh he was an intern for howard and uh i said hey, if, you should, if you should ever leave please hook me up and thank god he got into a major car accident and uh, he couldn't come to work anymore i was like uh, great could i call could you put in a word and he did and he told and i guess gary told howard i stuttered and where's it <laughs> where's the stuttering gone where's it now well, I've been drinking. I'm like, oh, okay. you know, I'm slurring Relax. John. But, I, you know, I still stutter. Like on The Tonight Show, you know, when I was like, I would stutter on crap. And I would I would have to. I remember once, Adam, you love this. I was like, uh, it, it was a, a bit, a correspondent piece I was doing. It was like beach games, whatever. And Jared Washburn was throwing uh, suntan balloons at my uh, back, and I had this thing I'm, I was going to say to Jay, don't worry, Jay, he's no Mariano Rivera. The worst right. two freaking consonants for a stutterer to try and pronounce. And there we go. We're live. Don't worry, Jay, he's no <coughs> Randy Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> so how did the, the how did the Tonight Show... I know I've asked all these questions before, but yeah. I was tuned out <laughs> when you answered last. And it's such, it's such a bizarre <laughs> move that you from How- Howard, and then how's your well, how's your relationship with Howard and or Jay right now? Well, that's... Well, which question do you want me to answer How, first? How, how's your relationship <laughs> with Howard? Well, what happened was, you know, look... Thanks to you, I we got in bad terms. <laughs> Was that me? No, it's not you. No, actually, uh, 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 Gina, I did uh, Adam's show. Uh-huh. I called in, and you were asking me questions, and uh, you know, you asked me things like, "Didn't I wish that I got paid more?" And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, who doesn't?" You know, I'm sure you do too, Gina. <laughs> I'm very comfortable. <laughs> She's not being paid. <laughs> So then, uh, yeah, he got very angry with me and and then about all that, and he trashed me for a while. And then we made up. I hung out in his house in the Hamptons, and then, I don't know, someone on Facebook, uh, like, posted something I said, which wasn't really that bad. They were accusing me and Jay of stealing Howard's bitch, which, a uh, bitch, which, which, which you know Jay would never consciously do. And then, and then it be, and I said, uh, oh, no, that, that's not true. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. And, and then that. That was it. I was I was dead to him. So then, it, go ahead. Oh, I was trying to think of a. I was trying to think of a bit. It, um, I was, I'm I'm searching here, and I'll, I'll see if I can find it. And I, well, now I sound it, like you, but my son, <laughs> my son came up with a comedy bit while we were driving. It was a funny concept, and I was like, "That's a funny concept." And then it sounded familiar, but yeah. I wasn't sure if I'd heard it somewhere or yeah, if yeah, he'd yeah. done it. Like it. I've, I've, totally topical DVR game. <laughs> yeah, I've had uh, wasn't that bit. I've had I've had. I just think I would never accuse anyone of stealing a bit. I but I would accuse anyone of coming up with the same comedic yes. idea. Well, if you ask Jay, like he would say, he would get the same monologue joke. Um, Submitted by five different writers, the same one. I mean, you right. know, I From mean, a lot of times, country. I mean, it's going to happen when everyone writes the same joke. I mean, but this yes. was uh, like this was about when he had like the you know who's going to win the Super Bowl, a chicken or 
Terry Bradshaw, like who's going to pick it? Right, you who's going like, to pick it? Right. And uh, and that wasn't me. I didn't. It had nothing to do with it. But apparently Howard had done that. I didn't. I didn't remember. But it wasn't. It wasn't my bid anyway. So you, know? you you were you're with Stern for 15 years. Yeah. You get how? Who contacts you from the Tonight Show? What happened was I did this freaking stupid show with uh, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. With, with, oh right, right. With, with then Bruce that. Jenner and right, you know, and, right. and Melissa Rivers and you know. <laughs> I mean, a bunch of other, you know, Z-list celebrities. And we were all on this freaking show. And then The Tonight Show saw me. And Dave Berg, the segment producer, and, you know, and Debbie Vickers, who you know, Adam, uh, you know, yeah. like they saw me and they liked me. And then I, and they, and they got me to be a guest, which was, which was my dream. And I had a great set. And, uh, and then they offered me a correspondent job. It was like being at the right place at the right time and doing the right thing. Now, and <laughs> do you, did, did Stern's hatred of Leno come about? Because of that, or was that a pre-existing condition? And if it was a pre-existing condition, then you had to know it was going to piss off Stern, right? Well, I know that he was. I, he had a little problem with Jay when he brought on two <laughs> lesbians to uh, like the show when he was a guest. I know Jay wasn't very happy. Him and Gary had a few words together. That's probably right. And uh, but then, I mean, they were still okay. And then you know, and then when I got offered the job, I mean, that was that was it. It was you know. I mean, but you know, Howard always said he wasn't mad at me. He was mad at Jay, but he killed Jay so much. And you know, Jay's a good guy. I mean, I know you hang out with him. And like, I remember when Howard was bashing Jay so much, I was like, look, Jay, I'm so sorry. And Jay put his hand on my shoulder and goes, John, I don't give a fuck. (laughs) Yeah, I do. Well, the thing is, it's a weird thing because in my, um, you know, it's funny because Jimmy will always say to me, well, you'll always be nice to anyone based on how they are to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, sort of like, yeah, I, I am like, like I, my only experience with Jay is he's cool to me. Yeah. And my only experience with Howard is he's cool to me. And it's weird that they seem to hate each other Gosh. or maybe, I don't know if Jay hates Howard, but Howard hates Jay, but it's a weird situation because you feel like a kid in a bad divorce when you kind of like you like mommy and daddy except for your mm-hmm. they're yeah, going well, through. That's how I felt. Cause... And I don't want to get I, it's, yeah, and you feel like you're getting involved in some sort of custody battle that you don't want to be involved it, in because I feel like I, I feel like I know them both and I, I like them both as human beings. And so did I. And the, and the like I was <laughs> the freaking post had me on the either the cover, the back page. I was in the middle and it was Howard on one side and Jay on the other side. And I was like, I can't believe this. And Artie Lang said to me, John. What are you worried about? Two icons are fighting over you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, all right, yeah, that's fine. Hey, Gary, <laughs> hit, up, uh, hit up Lynette. Ask her if she can tell me what Sonny's uh, on the road joke <laughs> concept was. I can't remember it, but it made me, it made me laugh. <laughs> and I had this other concept. And uh, by the way, speaking of comedy, John is uh, not only doing a podcast, but he's got some live stand-up shows. Uh, Stress Factory, New Brunswick, that, that is uh, June 8th. June 8th. Did you ever do that? Never been to Stress Factory. Uh, uh, that's great. Although my living room is actually called the Stress Factory <laughs> when you look at all the fucked up furniture they're sending me. Oh, I thought it was because you were married. No, it's that too. And then there's the uh, Irvine Improv that's coming up. There we've done quite a yeah, few times. I know, that's yeah. coming up uh, yeah, June 15th. More dates available yeah. on the website. And I'm um, in Tahoe for a week. Oh. I'm headlining the improv June 22nd through the 26th. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful there. <laughs> Gary, send me the picture of the side of that cop car. This is just a weird, I don't know, thought I had as I was leaving the uh, Burbank Airport on, on Saturday. But everybody, you got the Burbank PD, you got the LAPD, you got the Sheriff's Department, you got the whatever. And they all feel the necessity to sort of put their motto on the side of the car. (laughs) A slogan or something. It's always a tradition of honor and excellence and duty and service and all that. And by the way, we just got done watching the news. We're beating the shit out of a black guy. So it's like, I don't know about the tradition of honor (laughs) and duty. I don't know how the black guys in the hospital now feels about the tradition of excellence and service. Also, you're the airport police. Like, what are you really doing other than telling, hey, move that car. Yeah, I don't care if the luggage has wheels. I don't care if your daughter's in the back. No, nope. the white zone is for low <laughs> right, and low. right. But it's a tradition of honor, <laughs> duty, and service. And then I thought every single municipality, all around the country, every airport, every sheriff, every local, big and small, everything has their own little 
bullshit sl- yeah. slug line on the side of the of, of the cruiser, and then I thought, you know what? Fuck you! I want my own <laughs> on the side of your car. Yeah, like a. About a tradition of paying taxes and driving sober. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just uh, I got my own slow. You know, like when you pull me up, hey, read the side of the car. Uh, what, are you, what are you busting me for? Yeah. You need to read? Did you see the side of the car? <laughs> Mine would be the complete opposite. Well, no. Mine is, well, listen, John. Oh, I'm slow. saying, yeah. they're beating the shit out of the black guy in the parking lot. I'm saying, but they don't write a tradition Ooh. of beating the collar <laughs> folk. They say a tradition of honor, and duty, and slave. Yeah. To put in quotes and you get away with it that way. Yeah, you know, putting quotes like "yeah, paying taxes and driving sober." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A tradition of safe commuting and sober driving. So, how old are your kids, Adam? They're gonna turn ten when you hear this podcast on Monday. They shall turn ten on the following day there you go. on on Tuesday. I'll tell you a funny story, Adam, because my kid's ten, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> you know he's ten. He's a skateboarder. You know, I, I, I knew I shouldn't have got him into weed, but he's a skateboarder <laughs> and, and, and and he's a hacker. And, oh, you know, I, I, I need I, that. I, let's just say he hacked a certain establishment and changed a few things on somebody's thing. But the best part, he hacked into uh, my ex-wife's uh, boyfriend's computer and changed it. So when he clicked left, he clicked right. You know, the thing clicked right. right. So he clicks right. The thing clicks left. And with a smile on my face, I'm like, you know, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> but, wow. Yeah. Smart little whip. Yeah. My son would his does not do that and would tell me if he saw me doing it that it was wrong, <laughs> father. Yeah. But then the freaking dude goes up to him and goes, hey, Oscar, I'm having a problem with my computer. And he goes, yeah, I could fix it. You know. Well, that's what, I, that's what I'm looking for. Like, you know that moment that, you know, everyone talks about that uh, moment, like where they go, you know, the first time you saw your son do the recital or your daughter do, go, you know, walk or ride the bike without the training wheels. Oh, no, no, no. The first time you go, hey, man, take that garbage and drag it out to the curb and they do it. Mm. Like when you realize you can use them like mules. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the greatest moment in a parent's <laughs> life. It is, is literally eight or nine years of nothing but wiping their ass and throwing money at them and picking them and trying. And at some point you look at them and you go, my wallet's in the car. Yeah. <laughs> go get it. Yes. And they go, all right. And they go get the keys yep. and they come and they bring it to you. And you're like, like oh. whoa, I got my little carrier pigeon. Well, you're lucky because my kids go, you get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, my daughter says that. All right. I'll tell you, we have Sonny's a joke concept. We'll hear it in a second, and then we'll say, figure out what comedians, because I swear it's got to be somebody's joke. Anyway, first, uh, on it, baby. Inspiring peak performance. They got unique products. They use experts, athletes, doctors. It's all based on the latest science. On it, they got the Warrior Bar, buffalo meat, 14 grams of protein, under just uh, about 140 calories. No MSG, no soy, lactose, antibiotics, nitrates, gluten, none of it. Just the good stuff. The MCT oil. Just saw Dr. Drew through the glass here. He's all over this MCT oil, derived from 100% pure coconut oil. Quick, What healthy. I do now. That's him, man. Uh, Alpha Brain, all the good stuff, enhances focus, mental drive. They, uh, I, uh, the MCT oil, I squirt my coffee in the morning. It's great. It satiates. And then that night, I used the jump rope from uh, on it. They, got a, <laughs> they make a great jump rope. It's like 10 bucks, and it works, man. You try them. Everything and everything in between. So go to on it two ends. On it dot com forward slash Adam save ten percent. That is on it dot com forward slash Adam save ten percent. All right, the joke, Gary, that uh escaped me, but he basically wants every Hudson News, no matter where you land, to switch out their oh, memorabilia right. to welcome to Utah stuff. So yes. that even if you land in Portland, you get confused. Yeah, what no, he doesn't want the, he doesn't want the Hudson News per se. I was, he he just I know, he interpreting through Lynette. He just wants the welcome to like when you go to Reno, there'll be a store with like a grizzly bear and a saddle and the, a scale of the Ponderosa yep. uh yeah, from from um, from a uh, you know model of Lauren Green and uh, and all that kind of stuff and and you know that thing where you so his idea which he thought was funny is the guys who get off the airplane a little disoriented maybe had a couple of drinks on the airplane are going to step off the airplane in Oakland and they're going to have the welcome to Denver <laughs> store right there That's funny. and they're just going to go because we have all been in that Southwest haze yeah. before uh-huh. where it's like uh, wait, wait a minute four oh forty two B or forty two A and you've just 
Because every other sign you look at, whatever gate, it's saying a different going city. Right, right, and, right, <laughs> right. And then there's also the one where we're going to Oakland, and then we're going to Denver, yep. we're going to Denver, then we're going to Oakland. But he said, as a rich guy, he would simply buy real estate. <laughs> like, he'd say to the the, <laughs> par- the the people who lease that store out, like, yeah, I could put a steak and shake or whatever <laughs> here, but uh, you know what? I choose <laughs> to put the Denver store at the yeah. Oakland airport and have the drunken guys. It wouldn't work on everybody, yeah. but, like, I'm... It would give everyone pause. I'd be, I'd in, say that. I'd, I'd be in that group. I would, I would definitely be in that group. And 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 uh, look, you could put Mars on there, and I, I if I had enough to drink, I'd be like, holy shit, we love the planet. Hey, look, there's Gary Busey. Right. <laughs> and I would uh, I would then film those people too, and I would make sure whoever worked at that store was really coached Committed, up to yeah. play it to play it straight, have me wearing like an Elway jersey That's- and stuff like that. <laughs> I'd make sure I got the prime real estate out front. <laughs> you know, as far as the Burger King and all the other places, that could be anywhere. Yeah. So you yeah. wouldn't need them to change. And you'd have everything would be Broncos and all the other <laughs> mile high this and Rocky Mountain yeah. that. And I just and I would just simply enjoy the looks on people's faces. That one that moment of terror. I don't think it's going to last 20 minutes. Just that little that window, that <laughs> flash of as they're getting off the plane and looking up at the, you know, <laughs> yeah. Denver I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember ever hearing that bit before. Oh, uh, maybe. It, you know, it, he might be original here. He may have cooked up a, 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 funny, <laughs> a funny bit. That's not bad. Yeah. I, I was sort of we're that's dry- a good hidden camera thing. That's, well, a, that's a cousin. Well, that's, that's a, a cousin for Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel. That's a great thing for Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's fun. You go look, it, it, look. It was a Hudson newsstand. Let us take it over. Put the you know uh, Denver. You know, we'll call it the Mile High. You know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then we'll put all the Broncos jerseys and all Denver Nugget stuff and all the mm-hmm. Elway signed footballs. And we'll just we'll do everything. We'll be right at the front of the terminal right when you get off that Southwest <laughs> flight. You would catch a handful of people seriously panicked right yeah you'd get a handful of people who are seriously panicked <laughs> and it'd be a real funny hidden camera thing That'd be great. and and i'll bet you as they were stepping off if that was the first thing they saw a lot of people would go into that store and go please tell me this isn't what's going on here you'd have that person wearing a barrel yep. like barrel man yep. and the uh, with elway <laughs> jersey and just with, going i'm sorry what now where do you think what? <laughs> the yeah, yeah, that, that, that's the beauty. The person, Confusion. the person could would the person you're talking to would have to just assume that person thinks they're in yep. Denver. They just don't know which part yep. of Denver. The problem is, I'd be so drunk, I'd go, "Oh, the gig's in Denver." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, all right. So that's Sonny's. It's good, but, but Adam, funny I gotta, bit, right? I, I got to get back because you know Howard and I have had this problem, Sorry. and and no, no, I just wanted to get your advice on this, and and you know, so finally I said, you know what, well, you know, let's let. All the bygones be bygones. You know, we could, we've had, you know, back and forth. But I don't really, I mean, you know, it is what it is. So I email, I don't know how his email or his phone number, which I'm sure you do. So I emailed uh, Beth on Facebook, you know, his wife. And I said, I said, uh, look, uh, could you pass this on to Howard? I just want to say, look, you know, uh, I'm sorry for, you know, you know, I know we both said some horrible things about each other. But, you know, I just want to say I'm sorry. I always consider your friend, you know. You know, you know, John, whatever. And Howard responded and said, thanks for saying that. No worries. Uh, all is good. Howard. Which was, which, which was cool. You right. know, it's like, because I, I don't, have you gotten, because I got to the point now in my life, it's like I'm 50. I'm like, you know, is it worth having all these fucking gr- grudges and fights oh, with people? And not, I, I'll tell you, the, I'll tell you, the, the, I'll tell you a 45 second Carter Lay story but carter <laughs> lay is the heir to the lay's potato chips uh family fortune yeah i did a celebrity car race uh he showed up in a pair of like five thousand dollar driving shoes he was explaining to me how you didn't lace them up down the middle you lace them off off to the side because it can cut off circulation to your clutch foot and this that and the other <laughs> and then carter lay went on to be like the second slowest guy like like second only to wanda sykes he was slow <laughs> And I got on the podcast and I was busting his chops. Yeah, you know, I was yeah, like yeah. making fun of the guy <laughs> who spent five thousand dollars on driving shoes yeah, yeah. being three seconds a lap slower than anybody else. That's kind of what you would do. Yeah. And he sort of heard it secondhand and he wrote back to me 
like sort of tweeted or something like kind of gave me the hey man like what's up you yeah. know like i didn't know i was going to get a new asshole torn <laughs> just because i went out, friends did a celebrity race try to raise some money for some <laughs> some underage kids and uh, un- underprivileged kids and and as uh, sick kids really and i just I just immediately wrote him back, just said like, "Sorry, like yeah. I know I know it sounded douchey. I was making a joke, but I, I get, yeah, you know, once yeah. once it gets once it goes through the horrible HEPA filter of the so called <laughs> friends of Carter Lay or my wife's friends or the friends of my kid's second grade teacher, I just thought you should know. And then they <laughs> and then they attempt to poison the person of what was sort of a joke or a rant or whatever. And all it gets all put through their horrible shit rock yeah. tumbler. It's and never a sweet sounding. No, it's yeah. I, I thought you should know. Adam really loves it. Yeah. You don't think Carter Lay could have made it to the grave. <laughs> Knowing that I'm not knowing that I made fun of his racing shoes, you know, I think that would have hindered him in life somehow that would have really held him back. And I said to him, I wrote right back, like, I didn't get defensive. I didn't get weird. I didn't get, hey, that was out of context or fuck your friend or, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just wrote. Sorry, I understand how it would have sound. I'm just busting chops, yeah. all in good nature. Well, I hope you Jim understand, up. and yeah. I hope you understand, and I do. And it was a douchey thing to say. And then yeah. he just wrote back, "All cool." Yeah. And then about five months later, he was dead. Oh, geez. Well, at least you got it out. Uh, That's like, my whole point. Yeah. I wouldn't have <laughs> wanted. I wouldn't have wanted. Fl- I'm, not, I'm not laughing about his death. No, but, but it, it's I didn't. True. I did not know him well at all, and I still, when I heard that he had died. At a fairly young age, uh, several months later, I was happy to not have that sort of weird cosmic yeah. uh, wagon dragging behind me yeah. some, with some guy named yeah. Carter Lay in it that I didn't even know and wouldn't have had to. But if I had told him to fuck off or he told me to fuck off or if he had written me back like, well, fuck you anyway, a- apology not accepted, then I would have and he would have had that it, yeah, floating yeah, around. Exactly. But, Probably better way to but, go. But, but it's weird because I get like uh, I get like tweets or you know people on some websites who will go, oh, I can't believe you made up with Howard after all things you sa- he said about you. I'm like, I don't care, man. People grow up and just say, you know, like the hell with it. You you should try it. Why? <laughs> I I don't I don't get the people that are out there. Oh, attempt. Dude. I know trolls. No, man. I I know. I I get it, <laughs> and I get it. But why? I mean, what's it's, uh, it's because their lives are so miserable. No, I, I get it, but I, I, what I want to say to people is you have to go through life and you have to be satiated. And in many different spiritually, there's a, there's yeah. a part that involves yeah. eating a steak every once in a while, but you have to go like, all right, now I'm good. And, and hopefully that is in life, you're satiated by having some success or getting a paycheck or having an intact family or having your son yeah. or daughter say they look up to you or, yeah, yeah. or whatever it is. I find that a lot of people are, are satiated by fucking with you. Yeah. So they go, oh, I'm going to forward this shitty tweet or, or yeah, do yeah. this. And then they go, ah, now I'm, now I'm okay. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, you're not okay. You didn't do anything <laughs> that bettered your life in one way or the other. You've, you've made yourself feel better, satiated, or now you feel like, well, now I can put my feet up or take my foot off the accelerator. Like, no, you can't. You got... Howard pissed at John, but, or you got my third grade school teacher, my son's teacher pissed at me, or whatever it is you've done, or you got Carter Lay pissed at me, but you've done nothing. For yourself. But you have this, ah, I'm going to crack a cold one, kick my boots off, work done. Your life will be miserable if that satiates you. You need that sense of. That can't be your sense of accomplishment, but no, yet it's... that is some people's sense of accomplishment. Well, it was weird, Adam, because two months ago, Robin Quivers called me and said, hey, John, I just wanted to call you and apologize, you know, that I ever treated you poorly on the Stern Show. And it was very nice. She's doing this program, whatever. And I was like, thanks, but I don't really have any problem with you, but that's cool, you know, and. And I guess that's she was doing the same thing. It's just trying to just like you know end that. You know right. what I mean? Like, why do you want to hold on to that? Well, I got a beef with Robin. <laughs> why? Well, uh, you know, Doctor Drew will take the mic and the other thing and tell you right after I tell you about texture. Get Drew to he'll know the Robin quiver story. And uh, hold on a second, texture all the magazines you want online. You know, you're not going to be able to buy magazines anymore at the airport. Now you just put them on your mic, Gary. Because my son's little joke is going to take over all the Hudson <laughs> newsstands at all the airports. Kimmel, 
and my son are going to take over the world with that joke. <laughs> You're going to have to use texture. But save yourself some money. But, Drew, what, it was you that was uh, pointing out that I think the last time I did Stern and I was talking about going over to Costner's house. And I, I, I didn't notice it because I was in the room. Like, you know, there's certain things you have to kind of get outside of the room for. Someone points out to you that was weird. And to be or... fair, it's six in the morning or three in the morning your time, uh, right? right? And you're just trying to concentrate. And he, <laughs> and he drills hard. You just got to concentrate on him, right? <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm sitting there talking to Howard, and I'm like, oh, I just got back from uh, Kevin Costner's place. We had this big party. He had a big. He brings in 200 metric tons of snow. The kids are sweating. <laughs> and I hear Robin going, what were you doing at Kevin Costner's house? And I was like, Oh, uh, yeah, I met him, and we did a benefit for the troops, and his band was playing, and I was emceeing, and we had a nice conversation, I think, so he invited me up to what, his house, and I was like, yeah, yeah. A little anyway, too incredulous. So we're, we're going down, my kids are, are playing sure in the, the snow, and, and it's like, why is he having you? And, and Drew's listening this whole thing. <laughs> And I'm out of it and just sort of... I'm laughing my ass off. Because she goes around, no hyperbole, 10 times with confusion each time. And then, and then, and then Howard kicked in at least four times. Like, well, what is he say? Now, why? Huh? With, with you? <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, I don't know. He's a cool guy. He lives not that far away. We met at a rally for the troops. I, he has a lot of acreage. I, uh, I maybe thought he wouldn't see me. There's too much acreage or something. He invited me to his house. And I, why you? <laughs> and I was in the moment. <laughs> just not realizing really what was going on. But Robin asked in earnest 28 times. Right? No, it was, and it was deep confusion every time. Like, wait, you're not helping me understand what, wh how, what, you? <laughs> Well, as you know... Who the hell is talking? It's like the banker from Deal or No Deal. Like, he's like <laughs> That's Dr. Drew over there. He's I, always here. Yeah, and, and Robin, too. <laughs> you know what I should have said? As you know, Robin, I'm half Iroquois. <laughs> and Kevin was drowning. And I saved his life. So he owes me a, a, yeah, a, a life death. death. I was just taking my horse. I was just going to water my horse down. And I saw heard a screaming from the river. So I, how did then that? I, I, I took off my moccasins and I dove in. I dragged him to safety. And he looked me in the eyes and he said, you, you are coming to my home and bring your sled. Well, to be fair, you said it chalked I could translate. Yeah. <laughs> He said, Nanache, yaha, mana, kaka, nona, chaka. Said, uh, Mr. Costner, I bless your lands. Nana, wahaka, yana, kaka. And your family and all, your, all those that should come after you. Hana, Many generations. Hana, 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 hana. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how did it end with Robin? Did, did you continue? I didn't know. And I, I, I just moved. I was sat in for an hour. Had, had to had my fun with Stern, as I always do. Yeah. Left, as you always do, you know, three hours difference and yeah. three hours the wrong direction yeah. when you're in and with us and drew knows you fly out the night before you get in your hotel yeah, at yeah. midnight or whatever and you get up at 2 30 your time and yeah, whatever yeah. and then i had a pretty good set at a good time you know yeah. everything was good and then i got back studio and drew was like oh what's going on with Ron? <laughs> and, really and i'm like an instigator i'm like what what do you mean and she's like yeah she asked like 10 i was like oh, she didn't ask 10 times oh yes yeah, she oh, did minimum and then I started I I once. You'd have jumped on my ass so hard. I, I know. I started reliving it, and I was like, "She was very fixated on why Kevin Costner would speak to me." Yes. You know the Jay Leno story. Kevin Costner went up to him and said hi, and he had a hat on. Jay goes, "Who are you?" He's been on the show twenty times. Oh, really? Well, that's good. But at least there was some, Robin wasn't confused about that. All right, Drew. Yeah. Thanks we'll for tell. upsetting me. Well, anytime. I'm right. always available for that. All right. And by the way, I love your beer. Oh, Little Endless Ran yeah, IPA. Yeah, Endless Ran. That's, uh, that's my ex-wife every time I don't pay child support. It's good, right? <laughs> by the way, speaking of that, we got the uh, Mangria Bar Crawl. That's coming up Friday, this Friday. Lynette's going to be there. All the lackeys going to be there. Uh, Denver, careful, because right? when they get oh, Denver, off the plane, sorry. they're going to think they're in Denver. They're in Denver. <laughs> that's right. Denver. It's a good place to test out this whole yeah. bit. Endless Rant. <laughs> Brian Redman's going to be there? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wow. And uh, also, uh, Chris Max Pattis Band is going to be playing and all that. And I, I think the Endless Rant's in a can now, if you guys want to go to Corolla it's good. Drinks it's and good. check it out. I, I endorse it. Uh, do you drink it. it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so like some? to keep myself away. Yeah, I'll, I'll, ooh, this got cans look the, pretty. Can oh, is the way to go. It's a nice shot. What you want when you're photographing cans is none of the labels yeah, none facing out. None of the labels. Out. You want it all, <laughs> all facing out. <laughs> this is what I was giving. I thought the same thing. <laughs>
<laughs> Show us the first shot just for comedy effect. <laughs> it is a weird thing when you go. <laughs> I've always said, I was uh, screaming this at Lynette the other day where she goes, the kind of, you know, every once in a while people say like, the like glamour it's, it's, it's a picture of 28 cans, but <laughs> half of one has the label <laughs> to, to where you're taking the photograph. But it's like, I do have this, I do, and I'm, God bless everyone. God bless everyone. <laughs> God bless everyone, because they say to me all the time, Adam, you are very unique. You have a very sure. gifted brain. You like you, to promote think, the things you, you work think, on. You think in a very different way, at a very higher level than most people think, and you just can't expect. And I go, thank you very much. But when you're photographing things and you have the label turned in, I'd love to say there I there are only three or four people on the planet. There's me, there's a Branson, there's Hawking, there's Elon Musk. Like, well, there's only minds that could ever think yeah. to turn the label like, out. Toward, I was, toward the camera. I was a leveler, uh, a leveler at Food Town, and I knew you had to turn everything face up. All right, well, John Melendez, uh, these are this is an elite Great. fraternity. Each every once a year we get together on Bill Gates' yacht. We try to solve problems of the world. No, no, this is something sunny would figure out i i appreciate the compliment but this is somewhere between no shit and sherlock when it comes to we're looking at a picture a of point. 37 cans and none of them have the label turned toward yeah. the who did camera the, who, who it's what they would do if they were trying to avoid showing the thing like for like you know for legal, legal reasons, reasons. Yeah. are they mad at you yeah gary couldn't we just greek these out i uh, yeah. All right. Now, here's the other thing. I didn't take this photo. Now, there will be a tweet to oh, probably Jay Gary. Miller, who took this picture, and it'll be Adam said you yeah, were retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you should know. I just thought you should know. And then you have another oh, yeah, you have I just another thought tweet you <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, it's a 16-ounce can. It, it looks pretty good, although I've never... I suppose there's a world where you can remove one can and set it alone and take a picture of it. But, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I'll have to ask the experts. That's just yeah. Science. Ask Elon and. Uh, and yeah. Uh, well, no, it'll come up on the yacht. And, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be great. Yeah. What's John Melendez doing here? He worked at Food Mart. <laughs> he faced all the groceries. When I was in high school, I was a leveler where you have to turn all the he labels out. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. literally a job for this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Huh? And I was 16 and. I knew to do that. Wow. <laughs> well, you were trained yeah. to do it, one would argue. All right, so it's in cans now, although we're not sure exactly what the label is. <laughs> we have a fairly good idea. Certainly, we know what the back of the can looks yeah. like. All right, where were we? The cardboard box has got better promotion. The, the, box, the box looks to be... Oh, there we just got is. a straight-on hey, shot. There, there we, we go. go. That's a nice there thing. Can. Can. Thank you very much. God, it looks good. Of course yeah. it does. All right. Amsterdam, London and Dublin, live podcast, 27th through the 29th. Still tickets available out there in Europe, and uh, I don't oh, get out great. there that often. So come on out and say hi. Uh, Vegas coming up on July 8th. Live shows everywhere. Go to AdamCarolla.com, and you can find out about the bar crawl and everything. Just go to AdamCarolla.com, and you'll find out where they want some angry or whatever it is. AdamCarolla.com. John Melendez, everybody. You can uh, hit his website, find out his dates, his podcast, everything about him. StutteringJohnMelendez.com. Thanks, Stuttering John. Thanks, Adam, and thanks, everybody. It's been a blast. So, until next time, Sam Crow for John Melendez, Gina Grad, Ball, Brian, Sam. Mahala. Motherfucker, take those shoes off!